1857 timeline. So he's the best man to help us revisit our history. Professor Rudrangshu Mukherjee. Festival and privileged as well to be asked to deliver the Vaish Memorial Lecture. But my sense of honor and privilege is tempered by the fact that I might be carrying coals to Newcastle because I'm trying to tell the story of uh, a slice of Kanpur's history to the people of Kanpur. So if I'm saying something that is already well known to you, uh, please bear with me for the next 30, 40 minutes or so. The evening of the 10th of May, 1857, in the town of Meerut, it was a summer month, but around this time in the late afternoon, the English people or the British people of the cantonment town of Meerut were just getting ready to go to church. It was a Sunday when they heard a lot of commotion coming from the Sibuai lines and the cantonment. And soon this shouting was interspersed with sounds of firing and then the sounds of destruction of buildings being pulled down. And very soon, the perpetrators of this noise and this violence had entered the bungalows of the white people. And there followed a killing, irrespective of gender and age, of whoever the rebels, who were sepoys and common villagers surrounding the town of Mirat, who had poured into Mirat. <coughs> Thus started one of the very well-known episodes of modern Indian history, the revolt of 1857. As evening fell and the destruction of the government buildings in Meerut and the killings of the Britishers in Meerut, more or less complete, 75 of the sepoys, cavalrymen, all of them, after having cut the telegraph wire between Meerut and Delhi, rode off into the darkness towards Delhi. The scene shifts morning of 11th of May towards around the area of Lal Killa, what we often refer to as the Red Fort. It is also the month of Ramzan, so the old aging Mughal emperor, Bahadur Shah, has just had his first and only meal of the day and he's preparing for prayers when he notices a smoke, a lot of smoke coming from across the Jamuna, across the bridge of boats that then existed. And he asks somebody to inquire about what is going on there, what is the smoke about. But before that inquiry can take place, a large number of sepoys had gathered below his room, below his veranda in fact, demanding to see him. And as he appeared on the veranda, they said, we have come from Mirat, where we have actually killed the infidels, the Firangi, and started our fight to throw them out of Hindustan. And we are appealing to you to become our leader. Badusha was completely bewildered about what to do. A, he was old, and it was many years since he had last taken any decision. All decisions that he was taken in his name were actually taken, in the name, taken by the British resident in Delhi. So he summoned the British resident to seek guidance. But before the British resident arrived, 
another group of sepoys had entered the walled city of Delhi. And the rebellion of 1857 in Delhi had actually begun. It began pretty, it pros, proceeded, it began and proceeded pretty much as it had happened in Mirat, bringing down of government buildings, attacking white men, women and children, the looting of the wealthy, plundering their property, and so on. So the Britishers had could do very little ex except escape, and they escaped to a place on the ridge called Metcalf House, which still stands. If you are driving from Delhi to Chandigarh, then on your left you can still see Metcalf House is being sp spruced up now. But in 1857, in the summer of 1857, it served as the refuge and the haven of Britishers who had escaped the rebellion in Delhi. They also marched into a group of sepoys and rebels also drove, marched into and some of them even rode into the personal quarters of Bahadur Shah, the Mughal Emperor. This was an unprecedented thing. Nobody had ever done this before. They were actually at the Diwani Khas and they surrounded the Mughal Emperor and they said, you have to become our leader. If you do not become our leader, we'll kill you. So Bahadur Shah had very little very little option but to give in to this demand and the rebellion was thus announced in the name of the Mughal Badshah. So this is sometime either May 11th, late on May 11th or very early on May 12th. By May 13th, Delhi has completely fallen to the hands, in the hands of the rebels. The British have virtually no control over the city of Shah Janabad and its environs. It's very interesting that between May 12th and 13th and May 14th and 15th, there are no uprisings anywhere else in North India in the Gangetic Plain. But once the news of the fall of Delhi travels, across, eastwards, across the Gangetic Plain, one by one, every single cantonment town rises in rebellion. So, Aligarh, or Aligarh and Bulanshar are up in arms, 15th of May, Itawa is up in arms, 16th of May, and so on. It travels eastwards, still it reaches Lucknow on the 30th of May, 1857, and reaches Kanpur, on June the 4th. In, rebel in Kanpur, the rebellion also process in what some historians have called, begun to call the wanted fashion. The pattern was the same. There would be a signal, either it would be the firing of the evening gun or the sounding of the evening bugle when the sepoys would take to arms the first thing that they would do was to take up take control over the arsenal where the arms and ammunition were kept the bell of arms as it was called and then they would proceed to destroy government buildings treasury the prison the court and so on everything that was institutionally associated with british rule and then they would attack the Britishers. This is exactly what happened in Kanpur on June 4th. And General Wheeler, who was in charge of the brigade in Kanpur, the cantonment in Kanpur, on hearing that to the west of Kanpur's cantonments were rising in rebellion and in mutiny, took the step of ordering all Europeans, all white men, women, and children who lived in Kanpur to take shelter in a mud fortified area which, he, which, was, which came to be known as the entrenchment. This is where they take, took shelter to protect themselves from the rebellion, from the wrath of the rebels and of the sepoys. 
So around 600 plus Europeans were actually in within the entrenchment. While all around them was destruction taking place, looting and plunder taking place, not only were the British the victims of this kind of violence, but even wealthy people of Kanpur were also attacked and even when they were not attacked, they were often humiliated. For example, there was a well-known landed family whose youngest son was known as the Nanne Nawab and his very precious stallion horse was taken away from him and he was forced to ride on a tattoo horse, a uh, mare. So, structures of authority were being, structures of authority and dominance were being questioned and they were being overturned. The example of the Nanne Nawab is one very good example, but there were many such examples that one could cite. The other important point is that these actions were not just being taken by sepoys, but also by ordinary villagers who had poured into Kanpur just that, just as they had poured into Meerut and the other cantonment towns. So this was the initiative of very common, simple people of who saw themselves as being victims of domination, British domination, as well as the domination of Indian elites. There was one other very important episode that we need to keep in mind. Just as the rebels of, rebels of Meerut had gone towards Delhi to try and persuade and force the Mughal emperor to become the leader, a group of rebel sepoys fled, rode towards Bitur to meet the Nana Sahib, the descendant of the Peshwa. They didn't have to go as far as Bitu. They actually met him in Kalyanpur. And there are two versions of this meeting. Both versions, there is diffi it's difficult to say which of these two versions are true. It is possible that both have elements of truth in, in them. One version says that the sepoys met the Nana Sahib and they said, Maharaj, a kingdom awaits you if you join us to fight the Firangi. And if you don't join us, death awaits you. The other version says that the Nana Sahib had his own grievances against the British. And as soon as he heard that the common people and the sepoys had risen against the British, he himself joined the rebellion. And the sepoys made him the leader of that rebellion. You might very well ask why the common people were harking back a, to the Mughal emperor in Delhi, to somebody like Nana Sahib in Kanpur, to somebody like Begum Hazrat Mahal and Birchis Kadar in Lucknow, to somebody like Rani of Chansi in Lakshmi Bai in Chansi. Why were they doing this? Why were they going back? Having started the rebellion, why were they harking back to the older leadership? The simple answer to that is that there was a quest for legitimacy. They wanted to establish that their rebellion was something, illeg something legitimate against an illegitimate political order. The British were being seen as usurpers, people who had taken away power from legitimate authorities. And who were these legitimate authorities? The legitimate authorities were the previous pre-British rulers, i.e. Badur Shah, i.e. The, i.e. the Peshwa, i.e. the King, King of Awadh, and so on and so forth. So Nana Sahib becomes the leader of the rebellion in Kanpur and announces publicly through an ishtahar, a proclamation to General Wheeler who is at the entrenchment, that a war has begun. This is a public declaration of a war. And the siege of Kanpur, for which Kanpur is famous, begins from June 6th, 7th to June 25th. 
the entrenchment in, un, under siege, completely surrounded by rebels. The English, the Britishers are being shelled, being fired upon, sometimes 24 hours. This siege is one of the tales of heroism, endurance, and courage that British historians keep on writing about. We are not talking about that. We are not concerned about what the British did under siege. This is not part of the history I want to narrate to you. The British historians are very welcome to write about their heroes. The siege continues under the leadership of Nana Sahib. And it is very interesting what slogan or what a rallying cry the rebels actually proclaim. This is what it is. Khulak Khodaka, the world belongs to God. Mulk Patshaka, this land is the Badshahs. Hukum, Nana Sahib or Foj Bahadurka. The order is that of the Nana Sahib and of the Forge, the Sipahi. So there is a merging of the popular element of the rebellion as well as of the traditional old leadership. The siege lasted, as I said, on till June 25th. On June 25th, those who were within the entrenchment now the number of people within the entrenchment is drastically reduced because a number of British women and children have died, died of firing, died of starvation, died of cholera, diarrhea, etc., etc. Lack of water. On June 25th, there are 450 people at the entrenchment and they see a woman with a white flag walking towards the entrenchment. The identity of this woman is still to be established. It was probably an Anglo-Indian woman called Mrs. Greenaway. Probably. With a white flag indicating, don't fire. So she comes into the entrenchment and she says that the Nana Sahib is willing to have a meeting with General Wheeler and his representatives to negotiate a surrender because the siege has hit, hit, hit a stalemate where neither side is winning, so if it's possible to negotiate a surrender. So a meeting is held on the 26th and it is agreed that the next day June 27th, entrenchment, all the people, the entire population of the entrenchment would be provided with boats at Sati Chaurakhat and then they would go down the river to Allahabad to safety in Allahabad and every male member of the entrenchment would be given 10 rounds of cartridges for firing just for their protection. So these are the terms. So on the morning of June 27th, a very sad and forlorn procession of Britishers begin their trek from the entrenchment to Sati Chaurakhat. There are boats waiting, some 40 boats, 30, 35 boats are waiting for them. They begin to board the boats, the women and children first, and then the men, the injured men first, the able-bodied after that, and so on. As the boarding is complete, the last man has boarded, a bugle sounds from the bank, and the boatmen set fire to the awning of the boats, which is made of hay, and jump off the boats into the water and rush to the banks. So the boats are actually on fire. So people are frightened, they know they are going to 
be burnt alive, so they begin to jump into the water to save themselves. As they jump into the water, unknown to them, there were gunners hidden in the carts in Satichara Ghat, and they opened fire. <laughs> Some people, thinking that they would be safe if they jumped from the other side of the boat and then swim to the other bank, opposite bank, not towards the Kanpur bank, the opposite bank of the Ganges. When they do that, they, they are unaware that there are also gunners on the other side of the Ganges. They open fire. Many are killed, naturally. When the firing stops, the cavalry is ordered in, into the water to slash and kill those who are alive. A rough, rough calculator calculation says that after the 450 people who came out of that entrenchment that fateful morning, only 130 survived and they were taken prisoner. The massacre was so terrible and so widespread that one eyewitness said that for seven days that part of the Ganges, the color of the water was actually red. Might be a little bit of an exaggeration there, but that it's a telling comment of how great the massacre was. Out of the 130, the men were separated and straight away shot. The women were taken to an old building quite close to Satichara Ghat called the Bibi Ghar, where they were kept as prisoners and made to perform very menial tasks, tasks that a white woman had never before performed in India, like grinding corn. This was the job of maids. White women never performed such activities. So such menial tasks they were made to perform. Then the news arrives that the British army is slowly proceeding towards Kanpur and by July 11th, 12th, it is fairly certain that the British will re-enter Kanpur. On July 15th, another terrible thing happens. Quite certain, the rebel leadership is quite certain that they are going to lose Kanpur and they have got these 130 prisoners, women, who are actually witnesses to a massacre. So they send in sepoys to kill those 130 women, in the, women and children in the Bibikar. The sepoys refuse to kill unarmed women and children. At this refusal, Professional butchers of Kanpur, armed with swords and knives, are sent in. And every single person in the Bibikar is killed or very seriously injured. And then, to cover the evidence, as it were, these dead bodies, and some of them were not yet quite dead, were thrown into a well, and the well was covered. This is the second massacre that takes place within a space of 18 days in Kanpur. Now I want to revert the, reverse the story a little bit. That army, British army that is coming in from Allahabad, they have arrived from Calcutta and they are marching from Allahabad towards Kanpur and Lucknow and also spreading out from Allahabad towards Chansi and towards Varanasi. But the main column 
is actually coming towards Kanpur. At the leadership of this, at the lead of this marching column are two generals, General Havelock and General Neely. With this marching column, there is a correspondent of the London Times. His name was William Howard Russell. And thanks to William Howard Russell, we have a very graphic description of what this army actually did as it marched down, down the Grand Trunk Road towards Kanpur from Allahabad. A very graphic description. Russell not only sent dispatches to London Times, but he also kept a diary where he noted the events of every day. And these are some of the things, at least two I will cite from Russell's, what Russell saw. Russell writes that the GT road was lined with trees on both sides. Some of those trees probably still exist. At least the last time I drove from Allahabad to Kanpur, it was a tree-lined road, but things may have changed. Russell writes that there was not a single tree from which there were not hanging more than three to four Indian males. Any Indian male that this marching column encountered, they just strung up on a tree. There was no question of a trial. There was no question of asking that person, are you a rebel, are you pro-British? or anti-British or anything like that. If you were an Indian male, you were a rebel and therefore you deserved to be killed. The scale of this vengeance, if you like, went so far as in Benares, a group of British soldiers saw a 12-year-old boy, a 12-year-old boy banging on a military drum, probably had picked up a military drum somewhere, and as young boys can be, he was playing with it, and that boy was bayoneted because he was suspected of being a rebel. He was only a 12-year-old. So Russell records this, and this is how the troop marched, just killing killing indiscriminately any Indians that they could lay their hands on. It was an act of vengeance because they believed that Indians had killed Britishers also indiscriminately. So one act of violence led to another act of violence. The principal aim, principal aim of Havelock and Neil is to enter Kanpur and free the entrenchment. They are not yet aware, though Neil and Havelock arrive in Delhi in, on July 11th, they are still not aware that the entrenchment is, doesn't exist anymore, that a massacre in Satichara Ghat has already taken place. So when they enter Kanpur, finally, on June 17th, they find that there are no Britishers in Kanpur. And then they begin to investigate what happened. And they come to know, not in great detail, but they come to know that two massacres have taken place, one on the river and one in Bibikar. Then Neil carries out one of the worst acts of vengeance recorded in the history of human warfare. One by one, he captures males of Kanpur and he tells them, I'm going to kill you, but before I kill you, you come with me to the Bibi Ghar and I will point out to you a square inch 
of the wall which are smeared with the blood of English women and children and you will have to lick that square inch clean of blood. After you have cleaned it with your tongue, I will kill you. So that's what Neil proceeds to do. He doesn't stop there. Then he says, after I've killed you, if you are a Hindu, I'll bury you. If you are a Muslim, I will cremate you. So the vengeance is carried beyond death. The violence doesn't stop with human life. Because, probably because, Neil knew that Indians believed in something like the soul. So the vengeance would also be inflicted on the soul. This is the narrative of violence in Kanpur. Three very different types of massacres. One out in the open, in public, in Satichara Ghat, nothing to hide. We are the victors, and as victors, we will deal with you as we please. It's a public killing with a great deal of participation on the part of the common people of Kanpur. A second massacre, which is completely in secret, carried out indoors by professional killers, nothing to do with the common people of Kanpur and nothing to do with the soldiery either. And thirdly, the narrative of violence of Neil and Havelock as they proceeded, and that horrible occurrence in, of cleaning up the BB car and then following it up with a post-death vengeance as well. I want to end by pointing out to you two remarks remarkable aspects of this narrative of violence and conclude with a very different third point. One, in the course of the uprising in Kanpur as elsewhere across North India, there was a great show of religious unity it was made clear that the rebellion was not just about Hindus or just about Muslims. Every single rebel leader in every single ishtahar and proclamation that, it, that they put out before the public appealed to both religions in, and they say, in the name of Lord Shiva, in the name of Allah, we ask you to join this battle against the Firangi. So, the 1857 is one of the great points, high water marks, of religious unity in India. We need to remember this in present times. And two, this is another remarkable phenomenon. A remarkable phenomenon which is not often noticed or even they're not noticed and therefore not analyzed properly. The Indian rebels had at their mercy for the entire summer of 1857 a large number of British women. Yet there was no rape. The British carried out in 1858 and 59 detailed inquiries district by district across the Dwab, across the Gangetic Plain, of whether there had been an, any instance of rape of British women. And uniformly, unanimously, those reports came back, and they're now kept in the British Library, one can check them, that there are no reports of violation. There are reports of killing, 
There are no reports of sexual violation of women. So we are left with this mystery. We are left with this mystery of conquering and a violent army quite exceptionally does not engage in any rape. Why is that? I have an answer to this, but I'm not saying that my answer is cast in stone and that's the only answer that is possible. The rebels considered the Firangi to be impure. Any contact with the Firangi to be impure. And because they considered the Firangi to be impure, a sexual contact was also impure. And therefore, they did not rape, they just killed. And a very big point. Previous writing, present political or even past political orientations have all glorified the revolt of 1857 as a great moment in our freedom struggle and our national movement. We must think very carefully. Can we, at the same breath, think of Gandhi as the maker of the Indian national movement with Gandhi's emphasis on nonviolence, and at the same breath, think of the revolt of 1857 and the violence that it embodied as being a part of the same freedom struggle. This is the last question that I leave with you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This was a real graphic revisit. Um, and if you want to ask him anything, one or two questions. मनोज कपूर है मैं इसी शहर का पैदाई हूँ आपने मौत ज्ञानवर्धन इतिहास सामने रखा दो तीन छोटी छोटी जिज्ञासाएं थी जो समोसा समय कम होने आप कंफर्टेबल हैं हिंदी में बोल दीजिए विल ट्रांस यू नो स्टेंस आपने 1857 का रोटी और कमल की चर्चा नहीं की ये क्या सिग्निफाई करते थे नंबर ए आपने कहा मैस्कर में सब अंग्रेज मारे गए समोता आप तो बहुत विद्वान हैं अंतर्राष्ट्रीय ख्यात प्राप्त हैं आपने मॉर्बेट थॉमसन की किताब पढ़ी होगी स्टोरी ऑफ कांग्रेस एक नौ बजी थी जो गंगा में बहते हुए सेवराजपुर पे जाके रुकी थी डाउन स्ट्रीम नॉट अप उसमें तीन जने थे डेला फोर्स मॉर्बेट थॉमसन और प्राइवेट मर्फी डेला फोर्स ने भी अपना अकाउंट लिखा है और मॉर्बेट थॉमसन ने आपने कहा नावें चली नाव पे बैठे और बिगुल बजा नहीं मॉर्बेट थॉमसन लिखता है द लास्ट पेन वॉज टू राइट ऑन ऑन बोर्ड वॉज Major Vibrant. When he entered the boat, he shouted off. The boat, boat start moving, and simultaneously there was a sound of vigor from the Hardeo Temple. Marbury Thompson आगे लिखता है. आपको सवाल क्या है? सवाल ही तो बता रहा हूँ. जो छोटा है. इतिहासा बता रहे हैं यू जस्ट इतिहासा नहीं है. ये इतिहास की बात है. मॉर्बे थॉमसन अकेला आदमी है जो आई विटनेस है उस एपिसोड का उसको आपने 
ध्यान नहीं रहा या सबने कम था वो लिखता है कि जब नामे चली है तो सारे चपाकी एंड द कमल इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द डिस्कशन टूडे आई वॉज आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वॉट हैपन इन द मैसेकर इन कानपुर जस्ट वन मिनट सर वन मिनट सर सो I have written five books on the revolt of 1857. You want to read about what happened with the Chapatis and the Kamal? You can read them and find out. Yes. This is not. I cannot. I am not talking about a general history of the revolt of 1857 here. Okay. So that takes care of your first question. Second question is: I have not only read the story of Kanpur by Margaret Thompson. I have also seen the private papers of Margaret Thompson. Okay. So and there are. variations between the draft that Margaret Thompson prepared and what he finally published i have also compared those various different drafts and the final publication you can read my book specter of violence the massacres in kanpur in 1857 where all these points are made and margaret thompson's account is is actually analyzed in very great detail you cannot expect in a lecture lasting for 40 minutes to have every single detail of the massacres in gun yes. this is a very unfair expectation on your part no. if you want to tell this audience you you also know a great deal about the revolt of 1857 in kanpur you are welcome to give another lecture Absolutely. but that cannot Absolutely. be a criticism of me Hello, no, Manoj no, ji. Manoj ji, I think he has already said it. We sh we should not. Uh, yeah, please. No, the point that he is making. Please take the mic. Please take the mic. Yeah. See, uh, what is not correct is that we firing started from the. We we are no, we are not here to debate what is not correct. He, Let, no, 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 I, no, 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 You see, it is my version. Yes. And so don't say it is no, incorrect. No, 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 it no, is no. very, in, very unfair to say it is incorrect. How do you know it is incorrect? Because, Because I, read, I, I, like you, I have read a lot. Now, now let me tell you, what you are saying is the British version. Could be. Sir. Could be. About sir, sir, sir. you are correct. Could. About sir. Sir. You are correct, sir. but you are sir. not Could correct. Sir. Could be. Sir. Could be. That doesn't sir, make it. Sir, when we will invite you to talk and put your version. That doesn't make it incorrect. I object to the word incorrect. It doesn't mean because it is the British version, it is not incorrect. No, no, I am not saying. You said it was incorrect. Of course, I am not I, saying it is incorrect. I am not saying that it is incorrect. Sir, 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 because sir. Because there are two words. Sir, we have to make a value judgment whether. No, you don't have to make a value judgment here. This is a lecture. Please, you put a question. If he can answer, no, he will. No, no, no. If he says something we are which not, is not acceptable to sir, us, I will. I have to say this. Please, yes, if you please. Please. we have heard you. It, we have heard you. If it suits you, we have heard you. You don't we accept it. Fine. We have heard you. The lady here wants to. I am only you. trying to tell you. The lady here wants. So, इतना सब history का जब आपका सच्चाई मालूम है तो पढ़ाया क्यों नहीं जाता है? पढ़ाया जाता है. अगर पढ़ाया जाता है तो बता दीजिए किन किताबों में? N C R T की books में है ये सब? नहीं N C R T तो किताब में है नहीं तो फिर और कौन सी किताबों में चाहते हैं इसको पढ़ाना हमारी स्टडी में चाहते हैं यू आर लेविंग यू वांट टू वेट इट सेल्फ सॉरी आप अपनी लेस पर आकर के अपनी रिसर्च वैल्यू पे जाकर के अपने हाई स्टेटस पे जाकर पढ़ाना चाहते हो पढ़ना चाहते हैं सर आप स्टूडेंट लाइफ में क्यों नहीं पढ़ रहे हैं आई टीच सर ये व्हाट इज रॉन्ग आई टीच किसी आर्टिस्ट से होना चाहिए आई टीच किसी वाले की आर्टिस्ट से होना चाहिए यहां नहीं अगर एनसी आर्टिस्ट हो जाएंगे तो यहां डिबेट बेकार है तो एनसी आर्टिस्ट यहां डिबेट तो है नहीं आई हैव रिटन द एनसी आर्टिस्ट बुक्स ना आई हैव रिटन द एनसी आर्टिस्ट बुक्स इट्स अ क्वेश्चन यू हैव टू आस्क द एनसी आर्टिस्ट पीपल आई हैव दिस इज द लास्ट क्वेश्चन एंड अ क्वेश्चन ना थैंक यू ठीक है थैंक यू उनको बता दीजिए प्लीज
has a very simple meaning lex like dictionary meaning it's a mass killing of people mass killing of people but whoever carries it out created no. them as equal whoever every, every time someone up throw some some like a subjugation subjugated population overthrows another one you can't equal, you can't uh, you know keep them both on the same platform right so um, as i said the word massacre i am using it in a neutral sense where a large number of people were killed whether it was killed by indians or whether it was killed by the british it's a massacre so you are giving it a completely it's a massacre yes no sir yes it's a massacre sorry it's a it's a massacre the oppressed and the oppressor killing is if the oppressed kill in a mass scale it's a massacre if the oppressors kill in a mass scale it's I, I, a massacre i think we'll have to limit this because there is a play after this and we need the aud auditorium pankaj ji prashna the view of nana sahab towards massacre so we will discuss in some other lecture we talk in total outside the auditorium pankaj aap wo pooch rahe ho the role of nana sahib in the massacre no somebody has said that no no I don't call it the first war of Indian independence, and I also agree that if, if it's a matter of speculation, if this rebellion had succeeded, yes, the rebels wanted to re-establish the older order. And I have this is not something new that I'm saying, saying, saying here. I have written this very clearly in every single book on 1857 that I have written. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, yes. Role or view of Nana Sahab towards these massacres. So, the straight answer to that is there is no clear answer. <laughs> okay. Because again, there are many versions to this. one version says that the nana sahib was actually present in satichaura ghat and was directing affairs absolutely wrong let me give let sir i said i said there is one version, version here i said there is one version before you lose your temper let me finish what i am saying <laughs> so this is one version why am i saying we cannot say there is another version which says that ran nana sahib was actually not present at satichaura okay so one cannot reconcile these two versions and there is no way of knowing which of these two versions is true both come from very reliable sources so my answer to your question is that we do not know thank you thanks thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir big round of applause for you Thank you, Mr. Mukherjee. I'm so happy, seriously, friends, that there was disagreement in this room, because sometimes too much agreement leads to a very boring conversation. This conversation was very lively. Thanks to the people there, and great thanks to Mr. Mukherjee who laid the ground that we could agree or disagree with him. 
But remember, sir, he is a scholar. You were mentioning some books. He definitely has read those books. They are popular books. He has read them. Even I accidentally have read them because I was once upon a time reading, writing a film on that. Anyway, that's not important that who has read what. The thing is that here is a certain point of view of a scholar who has collated many of the books, many of the personal accounts, which are not available to people like me at least. Maybe you can go to the London Library and read them. So he has been, he has access to those things. And we have to listen to one account and not as he said, that don't tell this is wrong. You can have another, another opinion, another account. Yahan tak ki humare priya tulsi daas ji kya kehte hai, mitro, agar aapko bata ho ki nana bhaati ram avatara. Ek hi nahi hai, wo jo ayodhya wala hai. Nana bhaati ram avatara, ramayan sat koti prakara. Ye tulsi kya rahe hai? Ye to unka nahi, bas tulsi kya hai? Eh, baki sab paal ke bheg jo jala do. तुलसी कह रहे हैं कि दूसरी की रामायणों को भी पढ़ो मुझसे पहले बहुत से लोग लिख गए और मुझसे बात बहुत लोग लिखेंगे अलग अलग भाषाओं में लिखेंगे तो अगर तुलसी जैसा ये व्यक्ति मान रहा है और राम जैसे व्यक्ति के बारे में मान रहा है और यहां मानने को नहीं दिया रहा है कि जब मैंने वाली जो किताब पढ़ी है उसमें मैंने एक सौ खर्च किया तो वही सही है ऐसा नहीं होता हमें बहुत सारी किताबें पढ़ गई और इतिहास ऐसी चीज है हो सकता है कल को एक नई किताब और पैदा हो किसी लाइब्रेरी में किसी आर्काइव में एक और नया डॉक्यूमेंट निकले और एक और चीज पैदा हो जाए एक और व्यू हमारे सामने आ जाए कि असल में तो जो डायरी लिखी थी जिनका उन्होंने जिक्र किया था वो झूठ लिख के गया था जानबूझ के बाद में किसी और ने फेक लिखी थी क्या पता कोई 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 को, को फेक ढूंढने वाला ढूंढ दे या क्या पता आप वाली किताब का कुछ और निकल आए तो दोस्तों ये याद रखिए कि नाना भांति राम अवतारा और रामायण हमेशा होगी सत कोटि प्रकारा बट वी और we are and, and history doesn't have doesn't have to have innovation that's what madam when you talked about and you got so agitated where's the massacre girl uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, when you got so agitated about the word massacre as he rightly said massacre is a pathological thing massacre is like in pathology na wo nahi wo heart attack se nahi mare the padosi ne jo gali di thi na usse mare the are bhai mare to heart attack se hi thi wo padosi ki gali se the ki bitiya ke bhag jane se thi ki bitiya ne kisi दूसरी जाति वाले से शादी कर ली थी इसलिए कैसे भाई मरे अल्टीमेटली पैथोलॉजिकली हार्ट अटैक से मरे थे मैसेकर इज अर इज अर अगर कलकत्ता में एक ब्लैक होल होता है तो इट्स मैसेकर तो ये सोचने की बात है मित्रों और ये भी बात नो बडी इन ब्रिटिश हिस्ट्री से दैट जनरल डील डिड द मैसेकर चेक दैट्स व्हाट ही पॉइंटेड आउट यू शुड बी हैप्पी दैट ही नेवर सेड दैट और जनरल डील इज नॉट दैट ही सेड दैट दैट नॉट ओनली आपने सुना नहीं सर शायद इन्होंने कहा ना सिर्फ मारा बल्कि जबान से दीवारों पे खून चाटने के लिए कहा वो जो कुछ हुआ वो मैसेगर ही तो था ये पर्पज लिटफेस्ट का ये नहीं होता है कि हम साहित्य की आपकी सारी भूख मिटा देंगे हमेशा हमेशा के लिए हम आपकी भूख बढ़ा देंगे ये एक लिट फेस्ट का मकसद होता है लिट फेस्ट का मकसद ये नहीं होता है कि हम आपको सारे जवाब दे देंगे हम आपके और अपने दीवार में दिमागों में और उलझन और सवाल पैदा कर देंगे ये जरूरी है दोस्तों